Hi there, I'm Andrew Vickers. I'm going to talk about what I consider to be a major harm of the current way we use MRI in the early detection of prostate cancer, and that's associated with the use of MRI targeting, and I think it causes a lot of overdiagnosis and a lot of overtreatment. Big picture, how can we use MRI in our PSA screening programs? On the left, specificity. So let's not do a biopsy on someone with a negative MRI. We reduce the number of unnecessary biopsies and we avoid finding indolent disease over diagnosis. On the right, we have sensitivity. So we're actually going to target our needles to an MRI lesion to avoid missing a tumor. Now, a big problem with that is that for as long as I've been involved in early detection of prostate cancer, we've been worried about overdiagnosis and overtreatment. I've never heard anyone say that it's a problem that with our normal methods of taking PSAs and doing systematic biopsy, that we've been missing a lot of patients that who should be treated and should be diagnosed. So what am I going to be talking about is, well, what, why is it that MRI targeting causes overdiagnosis, overtreatment? What's the evidence that it does indeed do so? And what do I think is the way forward? And if you don't want to listen to all that, the only thing you have to remember is this, all the studies that we use to say we should use MRI, randomized trials and so on, use Gleason grade as the endpoint, and that is in fact a surrogate outcome. Okay, so what about the mechanisms? So here's a prostate in pink, and then we have a tumor there. Uh, red is pattern four, blue is pattern three, and we can see various needles. Now in a systematic biopsy, where the location of the needle is random with respect to the tumor, uh, on average, a needle will find a three plus four, will be three plus four, which is actually what this tumor is. But in a targeted biopsy, the rule is you put in multiple cores and you take the core with the highest grade. That's what counts. And so if you put in four cores into this tumor, four needles, uh, you can, there's an 80% chance that you're going to call this three plus four tumor actually a four plus four. The problem with our interpretation of the current trials literature is that we think of finding cancer in the same way we think of, of car keys, right? If you, if you can't find the car keys because your room's a mess, that says absolutely nothing about the ability of those keys to open the car and start up the engine. But in general, in life, what you actually find is that the method of detection influences risk. So if I'm thinking of buying a house and I walk in, randomly lift up some wallpaper and find the wall covered in mold, I'm going to have some very serious problems. If I send in a sniffer dog who goes around the house, you know, barks at a little area and I lift up the wallpaper there and see a bit of mold, maybe I'm not so worried about it. Maybe I can think of mitigation rather than calling the whole thing off. So one way of thinking about this is, is the whole issue of surgical pathology versus biopsy pathology. And in the early days of active surveillance, this is what I would hear all the time from urologists. It's like, well, your ideas on active surveillance, Andrew, are all very well. I don't know why they were my ideas, but whatever. But, you know, we've all seen it. We think it's a Gleason 6, but we go to the uh, surgery and it comes out as, as a Gleason 7. But there's plenty of evidence that if a tumor is upgraded on radical prostatectomy, it really isn't that harmful. So this is the results of the BCR. If you're clinical low risk and you have a high grade tumor on surgical pathology, the hazard ratio is 0.26, a massive decrease in risk compared to if you were four plus three always. Uh, same has been true for um, looking at death. Um, so, we actually looked at a thousand patients who were, were low risk. About half of them were upgraded, three plus four, no deaths at 10 years, 7%, four plus three, no deaths. A very small proportion were upgraded all the way to four plus four, and they did have some deaths. But again, look at that hazard ratio, 0.2. So if you uh, your systematic biopsy says you're low risk, but you actually have aggressive disease in your prostate, uh, it's actually not that bad. It's not something we need to worry about. Okay, so what's the empirical evidence directly on MRI overdiagnosis and overtreatment? Well, let's look at the precision trial. This is widely considered to be the major evidence that we have 
supporting level one evidence, supporting uh, the use of MRI targeting. And here are the main results, as we all know, and look, this is fantastic with far fewer low grade tumors. This is exactly what we want, less overdiagnosis. But terrific, we're actually finding all these more high grade tumors, the, the really aggressive tumors we wanna find in the MRI targeted group. What I'm pretty sure isn't ever mentioned in the paper, and I've rarely heard discussed at conferences, is that the total number of cancers in each group was the same. If you had a technique and all it did was call some of the low-grade cancers high-grade, these are exactly the results that you would in fact get. In the NCI study, uh, patients, uh, if they had a positive MRI, got both a systematic and an MRI targeted biopsy, and they present the results uh, for, for each patient, depending on what their systematic biopsy results were and what their targeted biopsy results were. Um, and as you, uh, as, you know, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the patients who either have benign disease or low risk disease on their systematic biopsy. And what you can see is there's a very large number of men who, if they had negative systematic biopsy, would say, well, you know, good news, we can't find any cancer, but we have to keep monitoring you. With MRI, about 20% would say, bad news, you've got cancer. And about half of those patients would say, this is a cancer, I've got to go treat you now. Okay, how about the men on systematic biopsy who had a grade group one, and so we put on active surveillance, about 30% had high grade an MRI, we'd send them immediately to treatment. And that's a problem because we don't really need to find high grade cancer in patients who had low grade cancer on systematic biopsy. And look at this, this is a very typical study. There are so many of these studies, long-term follow-up of men on active surveillance who had grade group one on systematic uh, biopsy, nothing bad happens. 3,000 men uh, followed for many years, perhaps two had potentially preventable cases of metastasis. Um, what about men with the negative biopsy? You follow men who don't have any other risk, risk factors like a very high PSA, you follow them for years and years and years after a negative, in this case, sextant biopsy, and nothing bad happens. Very, very few of them are dying. So why are we running around trying to find these aggressive cancers in men who would be negative or have grade group one on systematic biopsy? So let's look at some, some more data. This is uh, in the European randomized trial. Uh, 450 men negative biopsy followed for 20 years, and there were five deaths. None of these deaths would have happened in contemporary practice. Uh, the deaths occurred either because PSAs were really high, like 73 or 33. These are the sort of men that we do uh, a, a follow-up MRI because they probably had an anterior tumor, clinically indicated, obviously. Or there were men who um, had screening ceased early because of age. Uh, because that was the protocol in the RSPC. And we don't do that now. If a man has a high PSA, we carry on following them, even if they uh, aged over 70. The results are very similar in the RSPC Rotterdam. They report seven deaths at 11 years. And what we can actually do is compare the NCI trial with the uh, ERSPC Rotterdam trial. There are more diagnoses of cancer in the NCI trial. There are more deaths in the ERSPC. So we can actually look at the number of deaths, and uh, look at the number of diagnoses and see how they balance out. Now to do that, you have to make a number of assumptions. For example, what proportion of those seven deaths in the RSPC would have been prevented had an MRI uh, been given at baseline? Right? How many of the extra cancers that you would have found by MRI had all of those people with a negative biopsy gotten an MRI targeted biopsy? How many of those would have been treated? But we can make various assumptions and we can then play with those assumptions to see any differences in results. What we can see is pretty much irrespective of the assumptions we make, the number of men you have to diagnose with prostate cancer and treat for prostate cancer, very, very large in order to save one life. And I'll, you know, if you make some sort of fairly neutral assumptions for MRI, you have to diagnose 169 men in order to save one life at 11 years. Now in the ERSPC, when the number was 48 at nine years, we thought that was far too many. So no question, MRI targeting leads to a lot of overdiagnosis and overtreatment. So what's the way forward? 
look, MRI is not going away. I'm not going to try and put the genie back in the bottle. Um, obviously, clear clinical indications for MRI. This is the sort of thing that we see at the hospital all the time. Negative biopsy, PSA keeps on rising. It's very high. We've clearly missed something. We need to do an MRI. Um, but the current guidelines pretty much are to give an MRI targeted biopsy to everyone with a positive MRI. And then it doesn't matter how, what, how you found the tumor, if it's a given grade, then you treat it in a certain way. Uh, interestingly enough, if you ask people, you ask urologists what they would do, here's someone with a systematic biopsy that was, just shows low grade disease, but there was one core of high grade disease on MRI targeting, their answers are all over the place. Um, so what am I gonna conclude from all of this? Uh, if, you, if you do MRI targeting, you find a lot of high-grade cancers. They're in fact low risk, but they generally lead to treatment. And so as a result of that, no ifs, no buts, MRI targeting, MRI targeting, what we currently do is leading to a lot of overdiagnosis and overtreatment. And we really need to do something about that. We need to do something about it urgently. We need to be a little bit more restrictive in how we use MRI targeting. We need to change our treatment guidelines and we need a lot more research. Thank you very much.